What's up and welcome back to Cleats to Whistle podcast. I am Brad Valdez and I am pumped up to be here at North Odom High School. Uh, we got two assistant coaches here. They're prepping for the Fern Creek week. <laughs> you guys pumped up for that? Absolutely. Okay, we are going to go from left to right and we just need your name and, and your role that you're going to play this season. Yeah, I'm uh, Coach Randy McGraw. Uh, I help out on the D-line as well as uh, Director of Operations for uh, Coach Roberts. And I'm Coach Jacob Vance, and I'm the O-line coach. Oh, okay. Hello, I'm with this real quick. Okay, and I ask every question, every coach this question, because we all have a past, man, and and, and we all have those mentors. So go ahead and, and shout out those mentors that, that, that brung you up. Oh, man, um, I'm a little bit older than these guys, so uh, I go back to Ballard in the early 90s uh, with guys like uh, uh, Coach Redman, a uh, guy named Craig Calvin, um, those are the guys that I think about when I think about high school football and, and those coaches impacted my life. There we go. Yeah, and for me, it's like Coach McGraw going back to high school football. It'd be uh, Coach Billy mm -hmm. Martin and then uh, in college too, uh, Coach Johnson Richardson my last two years there at Murray State. Okay, okay. And um, did you guys grow up in Kentucky? Yeah, I grew up uh, just down the road in, in uh, uh, the Ballard area. Okay. Um, so right off 42 and uh, 264, yeah. Yep, and then I actually grew up about – how far is Hillcrest from here? About a quarter mile this way, and I went to North Oldham. Uh, oh, okay. Yep. Okay. And, and did you get did you, uh, did you get a scholarship to play college ball? Uh, yeah, I was uh, – I graduated in 17 and uh, got a scholarship to play at Murray State. Oh, okay. And, and uh, what position did you play when you were in, in high school and in college? I was always an offensive lineman. I've always been big. From the time I was strapped on pads in second grade, I was an offensive lineman from there, that point on. <laughs> okay, and, and what about yourself? Did, yeah. did you did you go to college to play ball? Or? I did. I had the opportunity to to walk on at U of L uh, back when uh, Schnellenberger was there. Um, I was a little bit undersized, but uh, I was an offense and defense lineman. I, I went to college as an offense lineman. Oh, okay, okay. And and did you guys play like you probably played out here for the youth? You know what I mean? So like, and where, where did you play? Uh, actually, what is now kind of like that LYFL. Um, so I, I, I grew up in youth football in J-Town. So, oh, okay. Um, so it was part of that J-Town, uh, uh, J-Town Little League or JCYFL, I think is what it was called yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. And then, and then what did, what, like, who did you play for? Oh, I started in OCYFL over there right across the street from Oldham County, right down the street from Oldham County. And then here from Midland High School and then Murray State and a brief stint with the Jaguars. Oh, okay, nice, nice. Okay, and, and did you guys have a number, and did it have a meaning to you? Yeah, so uh, my high school number was 56, um, and the, the, the meaning behind it was uh, it, I followed in the footsteps of my older brother. So okay. it was the number he had, um, and so I just kind of inherited it after he graduated. There you go. I, I, I wore number 40 just because for my brother. So, yeah. And what about you? No, I didn't really have a number preference. I changed it at every level from high school to college, but once I got there, I kept it. So I was 60 in uh, in high school, and I was 61 in college. But I I always believe that the, the player makes the number, not the other way around. There you go. And, and and what was one of your favorite moments playing football? Oh, my favorite moment ever playing football is going to play the University of Georgia. Going down there to Sanford Stadium between the hedges. So they were like number two, I think. We were the first home game. It was sold out. It was something I will never, ever forget. As a wow, player. those hedges are crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, I think for, when I think about high school football, I think about um, playing. Uh, uh, we had a Final Four run my, my junior year, and uh, we had to beat Trinity at the old Cardinal Stadium. Oh, wow. Um, um, it was, it was, uh, that, that's probably the, the game or the moment that I think about when I think about high school football. Nice. Yeah. yeah, let's give you chills, especially your old Cardinal Stadium. Oh, yeah, man. That, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that, that place was uh, – that was something. Okay. And, and when when did you know that, like, you wanted to get into coaching? Um, I actually – so uh, when I was in college, I ended up getting hurt um, after my uh, – during my sophomore year um, that, that ended my ability to play. And, and I actually helped out at Ballard. Um, when I was uh, there still in college, and I, I got a taste for it. Um, and as I knew it was something I wanted to get into. Um, and then when my, my, my son came of age, um, I, I kind of got into youth football and um, just kind of fell back in love with it. 
Nice, nice. What about you? Oh, for me, it was in college. I always loved football, and then when my career was slowly winding down, I, was, I knew I didn't want to be done with it, so I knew coaching was the only way to, to keep that going. So that's what made me want to be a coach. Nice. So you just want to just keep – Keep being, keep, keep being being part of the football, game. Yeah. yeah, just keep going. Okay, all right, all right. And, and with you, you know what I mean, you guys, you know, you've dealt with the injury. And, and, and you, you know, you've dealt with, you know what I mean, just like the end of your career. You know what I'm saying? How how do you guys, you know, deal with that and, like, the stress of, of like, coaching high school football? You know what I mean? As a coach, you know what I mean? We put stress on yourself. As a player, you put stress on yourself. But how, how did you guys just handle that? Yeah, so so this is actually my first year in high school. The last uh, few years, I was the uh, I was the head coach at the middle school program. So so the high school, this this uh, coaching the high school level, this will be this will be my first year um, uh, facing that. But just you know, at the end of the day, I think Coach Roberts has a saying: never too high, never too low. Um, and I think that's something as a coach you have to um, you have to abide by because uh, the, if you abide by it, then your players see it, um, and your players will, will 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 keep that same mentality. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, for me, it was always, uh, and the same thing I tell my guys, is football's great, it's a big part of your life now, but it's still just a game. You know, f- you know life goes on after football. Um, it comes to an end for everybody. Um, that's always how I managed it was, it, you know, football still is at, the, at, at its core, you know, with all the stress and yelling and stuff, it's still just a game. Still just a kid's yeah. game, man. You just got to gotta enjoy it, man. And, and, and that's why I just love creating that bond with the kids, you know what I mean? And know, you know what I mean? Know that it's always just a bigger – a bigger picture, you know, it's bigger than you. It's bigger, you know. I mean, you're just trying to do it for the kids, man. And, and we're gonna get into the staff now. You know how how do you feel about this staff? You know what I mean? There's pieces that been here. There's new pieces that came in. You guys gelling. You, you know what I mean? You guys communicate, you know, pretty well. Yeah, I think so. I th- I think it's gone um, uh, f- fairly tremendous, especially with, with everybody. You know, I think Coach Vance and Coach March have worked with one another. Everybody kind of worked with one another in, in different pockets. But you know, as the the kind of the completely new guy, um, you know, it's it's been awesome for me. The communication, the collaboration. I'm a I'm a pretty collaborative guy. Love it. Um, and I think that's what Coach Roberts likes. That's that's the kind of environment he's trying to create. Um, and it's I, it's been phenomenal for me. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm the same way. I think Coach Roberts came in and did a great job kind of getting us all together and making sure we were all on the same page and what we were working for and, and his goals he has for the program. And um, I think we all communicate well, and I think we all get along. I think that's one of the big things is I know with you know, some of the staff last year, we all uh, all got along, but, you know, outside the locker room, it wasn't – or outside the coaching office, it wasn't one of those things where – um, you were going to stay after and talk for a while. You know, business was business, and then it was kind of done from there. Right, right, right. And and that's and that's awesome, man. I, I love hearing about staffs that, you know what I mean, they can go out, you know what I mean, go get some wings, you know what I mean, talk, talk. you know, it's big, you know what I mean. We Just, give each other a pretty hard time already, yeah. too. Yeah, and that's, yeah. Hey, that's awesome, man. I love that, man. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, now now we'll get into, to like, your positions, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, how How is your – how is everything progressing for you guys? You know what I mean? Week one is, is Saturday for you guys. Uh, how do you feel about – about your your role, uh, uh, you know what I mean for for your kids. Yeah, I, I you know it's it's a it's a little unique for me because I'm I'm helping Coach Franklin and Coach Smith on the on the defensive front, right? And so it's it's really twofold. One is I'm kind of learning from those two guys, right? Uh, as well as trying to teach and help them teach um, the kids and and prepare. But I, I think um, you know our kids they, they absorb things so well, and so it's 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 pretty amazing. Coach Franklin, Coach Smith were talking about earlier today. Right, you tell them once, and 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 they get it. It clicks, and Great. it's uh, um, so I, I think we're feeling pretty good about Saturday and 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 what we can do. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think uh, you know compared to last year, we had a lot of young guys up front on the offensive line, and, and we got all those guys back besides one. So um, I was kind of the oddball last year on the staff, kind of like Coach McGraw is this year, um, where I actually didn't come on. Not not in that way. I, <laughs> yeah, I I'm, like, I'm like, dang, you know, all right, you got it. Dang, just play. Play. First, year, first year, it was my first year coaching last year. And I didn't come on until about the second game of the season because my little brother was a senior last year, and I was just on the sideline, and the head coach last year saw me talking, just naturally talking to the old lineman, like trying to help and give cues, and he was like, kind of hired me on the spot. Um, so getting an off season with them this year and, and – teaching them the technique and, and like McGraw says you only got to tell these kids once maybe twice and they grasp it and it's they're ready to go so you know going into week one 
um, compared to where we were last year, it's it's already leaps and bounds ahead. Nice. I love it. I love it. And, and are you seeing any a, any certain player or players that that's taking like the leadership role? Yeah, I mean, I think um, it's 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 a lot of the guys that that I think you interviewed, you know, the 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 first time around. You know, when you think about um, on the defensive line, on the defensive line, I think um, you know guys like Wyatt Drury, things like Grady Anthony, you know, Charlie Bradley, Gavin Clark. Those guys are are stepping up right um, into into big roles this year and um, are doing everything that's asked and 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 then some. Yeah, I think it's the same thing. You know. You know in terms of the whole team, you got the guys you interviewed, your Jace Bullocks, your Luke Tompkins, your Grace Middle, your Carter Duncans. Um, and then in terms of uh, just my group up front, like McGraw says, Wyatt Drury and Grady Anthony are the two who's, who's led the way um, since the offseason got started. Nice. Uh, a couple more questions, and, and, and we'll get you out of here. Any any hobbies outside of football? Say say. Hey, December, the first weekend, and you make it to first week in December, week 15, you're done, you're over, you won a championship, man. Uh, what do you guys do outside of football? I got a, I got a, 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 a wife and three kids at, at, at home. <laughs> and so um, I, I use up all my, my, my bank of, of goodwill during, from, from about July to November. <laughs> and so come December, man, I'm, I'm on lockdown. Uh, but uh, I, I just, you know, I've uh, just my, my kids activities and all that. I, I, I like to be there for it all. Yep. Uh, practice games, you name it. Well, I'm a little different. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a little older than me. Um, I like to get out on the lake with my girlfriend and family. And, you know, I'm not sure if Coach Roger, Robert said in his interview, but, you know, this takes up a lot of our time. Don't get to see the family a whole lot. Um, so really kind of go and catch up with them over what's really happened these last five months. Yeah. That's awesome. Just a family guy, man. Yeah. Just hanging out on the lake. I, I'm not a lake guy. I, you know what I mean? I'm kind of, like, scared of water. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, man, I tell you away from that. But, yeah, my wife got me locked down too. So I don't have no kids, man, but I got her. So, <laughs> so this is the last question, fellas. Uh, uh, now, week one's here, uh, and, and you guys have been building. You can, you know what I mean? You've been building. What is one goal that you would want to see this team achieve? Well, I mean, I think um... – Kind of aligned with like Coach Roberts, right? Well, f first and foremost, um, right? We want to see these guys go out and compete and compete every play, right? I think I think you, you, if you're out on a practice field, you hear Coach Roberts say, "Win every rep," right? Um, that does that mean you're going to win every rep? M maybe not, but but that's the goal. Um, and so see these kids compete, um, you know, play after play, um, and and I think we believe that that we'll end up with a with a with a winning season and 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 fighting for that district championship if. Uh, if we do things the right way. There we go. Love it. And yeah, Coach McGraw kind of took the words out of my mouth. The first thing is definitely compete. Um, you know, the, I've, I played at this school, and, and there were things in the past where, you know, there were times you roll in against a certain team and you, you were already defeated. So I think the first thing for this for this team this year is compete every rep, compete every game, compete um, and practice every day. And then the next thing is, you know, win more games than you lose. I think that's the big thing Coach, Coach Roberts is – um, preached to us this year is you don't have to win them all, but win more than you lose. As if we haven't had a winning season around here and going on nine years now. There you go. And what years did you play here? I played here from uh, 13, 13, 14, 15, and 16. <laughs> you're, you're the one that yeah. killed me. Oh, my God. You, I'm telling you, these, young these buck, man. man, these guys, man, I, I'm going to put – I got to remember this because I, I coached Western 13 and 14, and we yeah. came here to both years – both you and these guys just ran all over us. I think I am telling you, it was eighty. I think you guys go, uh, both games was like was, eighty to like fourteen. Yeah, because we played y'all the first game of both of those years. Yes, and in the playoffs, both those years. I didn't play my thirteen was my freshman year. I didn't play, but fourteen I was a starting. Well, I started a little bit of left guard, a little bit of left tackle that year. Okay. Oh my god, I was so frustrated leaving here, man. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate you guys for coming on, man. It, it was a good podcast. Uh, um, good luck. You know what I mean? Saturday, man, uh, I will be there and 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 rooting both teams on. I can't I can't can't yeah, say yeah. who you know who's who's gonna win, man. Uh, but but both programs, I've been here uh, what three times now. I've been at at Fern Creek three times, and, and it's just I just love the staffs, man. You know what I mean? Just talking to you guys, and, and best of luck. So make sure you come out. 
uh, Saturday, they're actually at Odom County, right? South Odom. So, oh, South, they're at South Odom, uh, 6 o'clock yep. on Saturday. Come out and support these guys, man. It's going to be a great game, great atmosphere. Uh, like I always say, everyone has a story. I'm here for them to tell it. Cleats to Whistle podcast.